Hello, whiskey folk. Hello and welcome to uh, our, an unscheduled kind of ad hoc midsummer live stream from me. Hello, uh, folk. And I've not muted the thing. Just a second. So I'm, I'm a bit rusty. I'm out of practice. Yeah, a, a midsummer uh, live stream from me just simply because of how much um, I was missing it all, missing the community, missing hanging out with you guys. I know it's not a regular Thursday night. I know this is a Monday night. It's a bit strange, but it's just how it could, um, it's the best time for me to do it with the things that are happening over the course of the next couple of weeks and uh, especially this weekend. And we'll talk more of that, about that in a wee minute. But welcome to everybody. I can see that you've been chatting amongst yourselves, waiting for me to get myself sorted out here. And welcome, of course, if you're picking this up on the replay and you've not been able to catch it live. Like I say, it's not a regular live stream, so it's not got the usual structure. I don't really have any guests sorted out, and I certainly don't have a quiz at the end. So I'm hoping that it can be a bit shorter on this this Monday night. Um, I always said I would do a kind of midsummer thing, kind of just check in with you in August at some point, um, and then start the regular live streams from uh, September as, as promised. I was always going to take in the July and first half of August off as a wee break. I have enjoyed that break. I think it's been good. It's been beneficial for me. But I've been missing the community. I've been missing you guys. Um, I, I've just seen a, a green flash come up on the screen from my buddy Vin, No Nonsense Whiskey. He sent me a virtual dram, and Vin is saying congratulations on three cubs, 3K subs. Thank you very much, Vin. Just literally two minutes before I went live, I picked up a Twitter message from you as well. I'd been watching that all day and it was sitting at 2999 all day and it, it just wouldn't tick over. You know, watched kettles don't boil, right? And uh, I got that message from you saying that you'd spotted that I'd tripped 3K subs, which is fantastic. 3,000 subs is just amazing. And what's really amazing about it for me and what I appreciate more than anything is just how engaged so many of you are. It's not like um, the... the, the the, the majority of you are quiet subs, you're, you're engaged, you're in the live streams, you're sending direct messages, you're leaving comments on YouTube and, and it's, just, it's just fantastic. It's great to have that, that kind of interaction there. So I'm really, really super pleased about that. So let's just welcome in a few people, just give some folk a shout out and say thank you for joining because I know there's been quite a few of you in so far, which is awesome. Um, how many do we have? 57 just now, fantastic. I'm not going to be able to call it all 57 of you, but I'll do my best. I can see that uh, right at the very start, um, Malt Chronicles joined in. Uh, I don't know if he's still in now, that was before I went live, but I'm sitting here. Uh, Malt Chronicles is a guy called Barp, and he's out in Holland, or the Netherlands, sorry. And he sent me um, a couple of samples. Um, he's a patron of mine, and he sent me a couple of samples. Uh, over summer and one of them is one that I've been desperate to try for a long time. This is Deanston. Um, now for those of you that don't know <laughs> I can be uh, quite a Deanston evangelist sometimes um, and that's because you know I just think that when things are done well they should be celebrated we all know and I think most of the people that have picked up Deanston and tried it either on my say so or have discovered it under their own steam tend to agree that they're putting out some pretty good stuff. But I was always a wee bit frustrated about this one because this is the Deanston 10-year-old PX, uh, which was a cask strength at 57.5%, um, and obviously Pedro Jimenez finish, and it was export only. So we could never, ever get it here. So my friend in the Netherlands, Bart, thank you very much, sent this across to me. He actually sent me a really cool letter as well, and I might just read this letter out because it was... It's fantastic to receive this. I actually came home um, late one night. I was out at a kind of whiskey thing, and I came home, and this package was sitting waiting for me. I opened it up, and it was just really cool to receive it. And he says, Dear Roy, thank you for your whiskey evangelism. I've been thoroughly enjoying contributions to Whiskey Tube. Thank you, Bart. Um, which has added a tremendous value to my personal experience and our beloved Nectar of the Gods. Absolutely. Um, that being said, I'm very much looking forward to the new season. Well, it's not started yet. But this is like a wee bridge. This is like a wee stepping stone to September. And he said, since I've been freeloading on your hard labour for the past year or so, I thought it was about time I offered you a little dram or two. He actually sent a couple. He sent a lovely Glen Geary here as well. 
Uh, I'm happy to be able to send you a sample of Deanston. You wouldn't be able to get your hands on easily, absolutely. I find it very well made and intriguing single malt, even although I'm not that big on Pedro Jimenez, as it can be so cloyingly sweet. I agree. Um, it can be a wee bit sweet, but I've been enjoying it recently. I'm hoping this is good. And he's saying, I hope you'll find it equally delicious. And then he goes on to say, cheers from Dramsterdam. Um, thanks for your unyielding enthusiasm and whiskey preaching fervor. The quorum would have me use yours sincerely, but this case it's definitely yours faithfully. What a fantastic letter and little package to get from Bart. So I'll raise this glass to you, my friend, and say thank you very much for sending me something that I've been asking for for quite a while and just unable to find anywhere. Quite sweet on the nose, absolutely, but if I'm honest, I think that Deanston character is there. That's kind of what's jumping out just now. I'll let it sit for a wee minute. 57.5% as well. So who else is in? Gregor is in. Greg from France. Fantastic, Greg. Good to see you. No Nonsense Whiskey, as I've already mentioned. Thank you very much for the virtual dram event. It's fantastic. Jason Coates, Whiskey Whistle. Amy, of course. Amy, wonderful to see you in again. Tom R. Fantastic. Everwind, Loch Ness, James Hope. J James Hope is just back from a trip to Speyside with uh, Connor Strang, Jez Batty, um, and another colleague of theirs. Uh, fantastic. Um, uh, Jason Coates, Brad's Whiskey Journey. Brad, fantastic, I think. If I'm fortunate, I'm going to be able to shake hands with you um, on Saturday this weekend, which would be fantastic. Uh, Mark Goins is in. I think that's a new name, Mark. Perhaps not, but it's fantastic to welcome you in. Good to see you. Jason is in. Um, uh, sorry, I'm saying Jason. There's about 400 Jasons. This is Jason Kleschult. Bird Dog is in. I actually seen a fantastic... Uh, message uh, from Bird Dog as I was waiting and he said uh, yeah he said if all you ever did I think he's talking to me he's, if all you ever did was inspire Scott Bruno's recycled review I would revere you forevermore so if nobody's ever seen uh, Scott uh, the Scotch Test Dummies a uh, parody that of the recycled reviews um, I mean it doesn't exactly endorse responsible drinking but it's very very clearly and obviously tongue-in-cheek um, it's very much a send-up of me but it's just a great, great fun video as well. It's fantastic. Uh, whiskey and stuff is in. Andy Arbaggi, thank you very much, Andy. Before we even started to go live tonight, Andy sent me a virtual dram and uh, um, we were messaging each other just beforehand and uh, thank you very, very much, Andy. You're a star and it's nice to have you in here again. Uh, the doc is in, McAllen Fine and Rare. Fantastic to see you in. Um, Creel is in, superb. Alan Wilson, fantastic, Alan, superb to see you. I know that we've met over the summer. We managed to shake hands and share a quick dram together in Glasgow. Top Whiskey is in. Uh, Top Whiskey is, that'll be Ed. Fantastic, Ed, good to see you. London Whiskey Club is, is Jez Batty now. Uh, so the London Whiskey Club seems to be going from strength to strength. It'd be good to hear about that, how it's getting on. Scott is in. Scott, I think you're on holiday in the Canary Islands, so you're coming to us somewhere down in the, just off the west coast of Africa. Fantastic. Um, Colourless Blue Things, fantastic. Dwayne is in. Dwayne Large, good to welcome you back again, Dwayne. Superb. Stephen Aldridge, Eric Gilbert, um, lots of you, 74 already. Um, I'll stop there and I'll try and pick the rest of you up as the stream goes on and just say thank you to everybody and welcome in as I take my first sip of this. Really difficult to get hold of, Deanston. Oh. Definitely cast strength, but not rough, just lots of spice, lots of sweetness as well. I've just come off the back, actually, of, um, now I'm not sure if this was cast strength, but it could be, um, it was in the early 50s. This was given to me from another friend and supporter of mine, Willie Dolier, um, and he gave me this uh, Glen Breton, 17-year-old, um, but it's, it's, this is the ice wine cask version. Um, so there wasn't a sticker on it or anything, and I didn't actually research it. But while I was getting set up here tonight, I enjoyed this. We'd been chatting about the, co the, the whole kind of ice wine thing, and Willie had some of the Glen Breton ice, ice wine uh, finished product. 
and I, and I got through this very, very quickly, so I clearly enjoyed it. It was quite sweet, but not nearly as sweet as I was expecting. A wee bit like this Deanston. Um, PX, if you've ever tried the Buna Haven PX, for example, it's like Buna Haven with this kind of sweet spice. Um, and, uh, you know, you can taste the, the, the sweetness there. Um, and this was a sweet whiskey, but it wasn't nearly, as I say, as sweet as I expected. And it's the same for this one right now. Right, I'm seeing some uh, orange flashes coming up, so I'll try and pick up some of your questions before I cover some of the topics um, that I want to cover tonight. Uh, let's see. Okay, Greg is saying he didn't know about the 3,000. And congratulations. Thank you very much, Gregor. It's, it's a, a fantastic thing to have happened. I mean, the channel's about a year and a half, maybe a wee bit more than that, maybe 19 or 20 months old now. No, February. No, it's only a year and a half. Um, so I'm super, super pleased about that. My only regret about the channel, um, and I've been quite open about it in the past, is that I'm still not able to get the time. Work is really busy just now. The kids are at that age. Family's really busy. Life is just busy. Um, so if it wasn't for the live streams, I think I'd be struggling to kind of share whiskey with you as much as I would want to. But I'm kind of trying and working on things uh, to address that so at least so I can get at least one to two kind of pre-recorded videos out a month. Um, I I'm saying one to two. I would be happy if I could regularly get a video release out every month and then top that up with the live streams as well. Um, but that's my only regret. But you guys seem to have been super patient about that and you seem to be okay with it just now. Um, although I do get regular messages saying I wish you would do more content. I enjoy it, I really do enjoy it. Um, to give you an example, I've got uh, Rob's Blind Challenge here just now, uncut. And I'm just trying to find a little pocket of time for me to sit down and edit that. Now, of, of course, that doesn't go out. That content doesn't go out on my channel. I edit that to go out on the the nominees channel, so that would go out on Rob's channel. But I still edit it, um, and um, I'm just struggling to find time to do that as well. I've got another recycled review as well. I haven't shot it yet, but I've got the bottles. And the only reason I haven't been motivated to shoot it is because. I've got, f I've got more than 15 bottles there, but I don't know if I've got 15 interesting bottles. So I might just wait a couple of weeks to see what other bottles I can kill off to kind of top up the, the variation there for recycled reviews. London Whiskey Club is saying, thank you for the Deanston 20, it's so amazing. I wish someone can help me find another bottle. I would love to find a bottle of that as well, Jez. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, I sent that uh, um, down to you a few weeks back um, after the World Whiskey Day thing that you won. And uh, yeah, that Deanston 20 was the all or also finish. Fantastic whiskey. Unfortunately, I think we're all going to struggle to get our hands on that now. Uh, whiskey Throttle saying, wow, you're looking good, Aquavite. Thank you very much, Daniel. I'll, I'll talk about that. This is a new camera. Do you remember the green whiskey? I appreciate that my face is probably a bit pinker. Um, where's the camera? OK, yeah. I'm, I'm up, and it's very, very warm in here as well. But that's okay because hopefully the whiskey isn't green anymore. So what I have to do here is put a huge thanks out to my patrons because um, you were able to provide funds for me to invest in a really quite decent, there's a very good uh, webcam. I mean, there's, they're never perfect webcams, but this is pretty much as, as good as you can get for reasonable money. And that came directly from you guys. So again, it's just adding that that little bit of polish, I think. I hope there's a difference. I hope it's a wee bit better. And we certainly don't have green whiskey anymore. So so thank you for that. Um, the Alchemist, fantastic to welcome you in. He's saying, hey, guys and girls, hope you're all having a great summer. I've had a great summer, Alchemist. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed your holiday. It was, it was really, really good. We had three weeks in Spain this year. A lot of time with the kids. Every day was just kind of focused around whatever we were doing to keep those guys. And as long as the kids were happy, we were happy, right? Um, Whiskey Throttle is saying you have been missed. Thank you very, very much. I don't think I've been missed nearly as much as I've missed you, if I'm entirely honest. Mm -hmm. Andy's saying drinking the Arbeg 24 Caddenheads bottle. You lucky, lucky guy. So a 24-year-old Arbeg. I would love to see your whiskey collection, Andy. That would be something to just stand and stare at. I'm absolutely sure of that. Um, Mikey, hey, Mikey, fantastic. He's saying great to have you back. Roy. Mikey, I think, we are you not on holiday as well? I wasn't expecting to see you in tonight, but it's wonderful to see you here. Maybe it's you that's 
is it you that's on holiday just now? Is it you that's over in the Canaries? Um, Who, would, who, who did I confuse that with earlier? Who did I think was in holiday? Mikey and... Ah, Scott, Kilted Moose. No, you're going to Isla. So, Mikey, I think it's you that's in the Canaries. Fantastic. Um, I hope you're having a fantastic time out there. I hope it's... Uh, I hope you're not getting hit too much with the, the heat wave, and it's fantastic to welcome you in. Gregor is saying, I got a lot of updates to do with Deanston. Sorry, maybe next French show where they will be. A lot of updates. Is that from a mailing list or something, Gregor? Razvan is in. Fantastic to welcome you in. He's saying, hope you had a nice holiday. I absolutely did. Like I say, it was all about the kids uh, this year. Um, and to be honest with you, seeing when you're in Spain and you were in really hot climates, when it comes to whiskey, you need to wait until really quite late in the day um, to enjoy whiskey. I think it's... What I was doing on holiday this year, and it worked a treat, is I was just having Dewar's White Label or Johnny Walker Red or Ballantines or whatever kind of whiskey um, they had behind the bar, and it was poured over ice and then topped up with soda water. And that was a fantastic drink because beer gets a bit, you know, kind of... Uh, um, but I was, in, I was really enjoying that, and it was a fantastic way to, to enjoy whiskey and not kind of have to sit and analyse it and just kind of have it on a, on a sunny afternoon. Um, but later in the day, much later in the day, in the evening on the terrace and things, that's when I was reaching for a, a dram. And uh, it was nice when it was much cooler and much later. I had a fantastic uh, 1999 uh, Bal Blair I took in, in holiday with me. I picked it up at Duty Free again. Bal Blair is fantastic value for money. This one was as well. They were even giving you a voucher for money off it. And I got a 1999 bottled 2017, so 18-year-old Bal Blair for £70. Fantastic. And it was a litre as well. But it was a very, very rich whiskey. It reminded me a lot of Old Pulteney 17, actually. Uh, Kevin Bryant is saying, what a nice surprise. Good to see you back. I'm almost back, Kevin. Um, I'm going to just bring you up to date with what's happening this week and tell you about um, when I'm starting back in September. Um, but superb. He's saying, just open a bottle of Brook Laddie, the classic Laddie, not tried it before. Blind buy and waitrose tonight. Um, I I enjoy uh, the classic Laddie from time to time, but I think I find it's one of those uh, more inconsistent than other drums. It's quite bizarre. That's probably more down to my condition and my palate than anything else, but I often find it with, with that one. Uh, when I was over in Isla this year, I got to try some other Brook Laddies, things that I probably wouldn't have gambled spending my own money on without trying first. And I was really quite wooed because some of the Brook Laddies um, were fantastic. The one I brought home was the Bear Barley. Um, and I really, I thought that was a wonderful whiskey. I'm always seduced by texture whiskies. So if it's got that kind of oily uh, weight to it, if it, if it kind of coats everything, if it's a whiskey that I feel like I can chew a little bit, that tends to get me, and that's the one that I um, that's the one that I, I I brought back from Isla from Brook Laddie. But I hope you enjoy it, Kevin. Uh, let me know how you're getting on with it. And Mark from Whiskey Whistle, fantastic to see you. And my friend is saying, uh, "Nice to see you again. Looks like you've got a bit of colour. I think it might be the I have got a wee bit of colour." Um, Scots people are pale blue, as Billy Connolly used to say, and we have to tan white first, and then we go pink. And then if we're lucky, if we stay there long enough in the sun, maybe we'll pick up a wee bit of colour. Um, but I think it's the camera. And because of the type of camera that it is, and because I'm using it on a Mac, um, there really isn't a lot of control I have over it. So how, whatever colour I am, I'm just that colour. I just the way I have to be. Kilton Moose is saying, how was a Bal Blair? Yes, as I mentioned, it was fantastic, Scott. It really was. Gohabs is saying, looking well tanned. Well... Yeah, I'm certainly looking pink of face, I think. But um, but yeah, it was just great. to. This has been a really good summer in Scotland. This has been remarkable. From April right through to July, we had a fantastic run of wonderful weather. Um, but honestly, when we go to Spain every year, you really do feel the benefit of the sun. You really, your joints feel better. You feel a little bit more charged, I think. Um, Creel is saying, Aquavite, I agree with the classic laddie, but the eight-year-old. 
that's still common is tax free has always been great. Wow. I've never tried it. And George Kaplan, wonderful, George. Great to see you in. Dram Dude is in as well. Fantastic. And he's saying hello to Eric Waite, so I haven't even spotted if Eric's in yet. Um, uh, George is saying beer barley is great. Also love it. And Springbank local barley 11. That's right. I, I Is that beer barley that they, they use in the, the local barley 11 then? Did they stick with beer barley? I wonder if they switch it up. The 11 was two years ago. I think the most recent uh, Springbank local barley was the 10, wasn't it? Um, I probably had that in my head and it's gone. Um, that's curious, George. Yeah, absolutely. The the beer barley. I haven't opened the bottle I brought back from Brookladdy yet. I will open it soon. I've just I've really got far too much open. It's ridiculous. I need to kill some off. And um, uh, everyone is saying, did you see that Mortlack like 12 has been released? I did hear about that. Um, had a chance to try any of the new... Co I've not even seen it yet, everyone. I just heard the chatter about it, and I think that that was a range that really needed a bit of fettling there. I think that when they uh, launched that a few years back, it was just far too cynical. 50 CL bottles, um, poorly handled, far too expensive. It was a shame. It was such a shame. Um, and you find the 18-year-old more like on shelves everywhere just gathering dust. Uh, Connor is in. Fantastic, Connor. Good to see you. I had a fantastic night with Connor Strang. He was up in Glasgow on his way up to meet his friends in Speyside. We managed to hook up on a Monday evening in, in Glasgow. Fantastic. We're just going to go out and get something to eat and have a couple of drams together. Um, and Connor produces this Brora, a 1977 Brora from, from 2013. Absolutely fantastic. And that was the first dram we had of the night. Where do you go from there? Just wonderful, and it was great to meet him. Fantastic guy. Um, we tried to hook up as he was coming back down again, but it was a kind of bit last minute, and accommodation was tricky being at the weekend. So maybe next time, big guy. It was a pleasure to shake your hand and spend some time with you. Um, and uh, the 11 is beer. The 10 is Belgravia. Well done, Connor. Thank you very much. You are more than my A student, aren't you? Fantastic. <laughs> uh, the alchemist is saying, where do you go in Spain? Often find it difficult to find whiskies there. I, yeah, absolutely, there's whiskey everywhere, but it's always the same whiskies, especially in Catalonia, apart from your J&B, Bally's, etc. Yeah, the, you can find Deek everywhere, D-Y-C, Deek is the Spanish call it, and they do a 10-year-old single malt that's fairly decent. It's very tuned to the Spanish climate. It's very light and easy drinking, like a very light space cider. You could maybe imagine it a bit like a... Maybe close to a Glenfiddich or something like that, a young Glenfiddich. But it's fairly soft, it's fairly light, and it's quite nice, and it's very, very inexpensive. Um, but there's a, one or two supermarkets that I've spotted that tends to have a few decent single malts. But I didn't buy any this year. I, I had enough over there. We've got a wee house there um, in Spain, and it's it's uh, so we tend to go to the same place every year. If you've got kids, you have to take holidays during the school holidays it's super expensive because the demand is so huge. So right now we're just kind of going back to the same spot and we've found a couple of supermarkets there that I can find uh, something. But because we've got the house, I've got a cabinet with a few bottles in there that I just make sure they're well sealed. And when I go back there the next year, there's still some sitting there waiting for me. So, um, And I took the Balblade over this year. So I had a Laphroaig PX cast from last year. I had still some more some of the Scapa Skirin, the non-age statement Scapa, which is not a good representation of Scapa, absolutely not. Um, but it's fine in summer and throw it over ice if you're really not enjoying it. And what else did I have? I had the Deek, a uh, 10-year-old single malt, my Bal Blair, and something else that's not I can't bring to mind. So I had enough of a selection to keep me going when I wasn't really drinking a lot. Uh, of whiskey and holiday. Eric Waite, fantastic to see you in. He's saying Aquavita, I like the new logo. Well, let's talk about that a wee bit because you might recognize that the channels had a wee bit of a lick of paint. And that was always something that I felt like I had to do because this weekend on Thursday, I leave to go um, to Texas. And this is a fantastic opportunity. I know I've already told you about it in the past, but as it draws closer, I'm getting more and more excited about it. Um, and the Whiskey Vault is a very young channel. It's barely older than my channel. It's uh, It was started, I think, late 2016 or something. Um, and over the course of last year, it just took off. And now, in the last month or so, they've 
overtaken Ralphie in terms of subscriber count. And from that, they've spawned another channel that's uh, specifically revolving about a, a completely different project. And that channel covers whiskey topics and things. It doesn't do straight reviews. And uh, it's a kind of video log channel. It's a vlog following the building of their experimental micro distillery, or distillery if you, if you want to call it. Um, uh, I mean, it is, it's small, it's very small scale, but it is a fully functioning distillery. They are distilling there now. And they have a launch party for this on Saturday the 25th. And I was very, very fortunate to, to get an invite from those guys. Now, it's a big deal for me in Scotland to get to Austin, Texas. It's um, I have to fly through at least one hub to get there. Um, but I was determined to do it because not only did I get a chance to be part of that fantastic thing, which I'm super excited about, but there's other YouTube channels going there as well. So I finally get to shake hands with Scott and Bart from the Scotch Test Dummies. <clears throat> we've been working together and talking to each other for over a year. Um, I feel like I know them already, but we've never actually shared the same space, breathed the same air and shook hands, and I'm excited to do that. Whiskey Dick Bill is also going as well. Um, although when he's arriving and leaving or not, I'm not very sure. Um, so I'll get to meet Bill and also Chad and Sarah from It's Bourbon Night. So plus all the, the, the whiskey tribe, the magnificent bastards, Rex and Daniel themselves, and just get involved in all of that kind of energy and that excitement that's been building up over there. And, and that is a pretty exciting thing to be able to do. Um, so anyway, long story short, um, I had been asked for merch for a while. I had been asked, hey, Roy, is there any Aquavita t-shirts? Is there, do you do Glencairn glasses? Um, when are we getting a coin and things? And I kind of thought, yeah, I'll do that. I'll get around to that. I'll, but I think the reason I was put off is that I never ever imagined Aquavita being something that people would have on a t-shirt or in a glass or something. I, you know, that was my issue. Anyway, I got over that and I decided that I just needed to kind of refresh the logo a little bit and make it something a bit more impactful. Um, just give it a bit of a lick of paint, as I say. So I did that. And as you can see, I've arranged these um, these t-shirts. And I will be taking these t-shirts to uh, Texas with me because they're going to give us an opportunity. They're going to set up a table, an area for us in order to meet people and things and talk to people and, and uh, uh, sell some merchandise and things to help offset the cost of the trip or whatever. Um, and just for people who may want it. Now, I'm not sure how much of an overlap there is in fan base. I know there is some, certainly. Um, I can see there's certainly one or two in here tonight. Brad, um, John, I think, was in earlier as well. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a few people in there, and Brad is there now. He's saying the distillery open is going to be bonkers. Still not sure how they'll fit that many people on that campus. But he's really amped up for it. Me too, absolutely. And I think the campus is massive. I think it's just the individual buildings and rooms are quite small and they'll probably just need to manage the flow of people. But the, here's the t-shirts. Um, these are going to Texas with me. If you want one of these t-shirts, please tell me now um, and I'll reserve a t-shirt for you. Um, I have them in small, medium, large, extra large and uh, double XL. Um, and, and men's t-shirts. I also have women's t-shirts, of course I do. Um, I have small, medium and large and women as well. This is a gray color and the reason that I went with this t-shirt is that this is a Brooke Laddie t-shirt that I bought when I was in Isla and I loved it. I loved uh, the color of it, it's gray, but in some light it kind of looks like a khaki green color. I loved how soft the cotton was. I loved the fit of the t-shirt and the feel of it. So what I did is I found out the brand and the manufacturer of this, and that's where I went for the Aquavite t-shirts. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with them. Um, I like, I like, personally, I like the quality of them. I think they're good. And um, I went for this green, this gray green color. And not in normal light, it's usually gray, but in some light, it can look a wee bit green. And I also went for a navy one as well. So it's got this kind of compass on the front, and the compass isn't my logo. What the compass is, is you might have seen it on the thumbnail for the live tonight. The compass is to talk about this kind of concept of this global connected virtual pub environment that we hook up. Um, okay, it's me monologuing more often than not, but you guys are chatting amongst yourselves. We get to hang out. We get to talk about whiskey a little bit. So I came up with this compass device, and I just modified that compass for this T-shirt so that I could add some context to mention that it's Aquavite and things like that. 
Um, and that's what that design is on the front. It's about the live streams, it's about the community, it's about that kind of connectedness and the global connectedness of it all. And on the side is a, the updated Aquavite logo, which shows, is that on turning up on camera there? Um, which shows the updated kind of a water of life whiskey barrel, but it's got this kind of evangelism thing happening behind it with the barley behind it. And the reason that I added that in is because that's kind of one of my things. I'm just always super, super amazed um, by how so many flavors are imparted on whiskey just from that single ingredient. Of course, I'm talking about Scotch single malt whiskey there. Just the fact that you can have barley and water and have, you know, that massive um, landscape and variation and flavor from it. So I wanted to include grain in there as well and I've included some barley. And then on the back of the t-shirt, you can see that there's a there's an Aquavite print as well. Now these t-shirts are organic cotton, they're nice and soft, they're good quality, they're retail quality, retail fit, um, and it's all screen printed as well. So there's a color screen on the front and white screen on the sleeve and on the back. They're 20, uh, they're 20 pounds each or $25 when I get to Texas. Um, plus plus shipping as well. The shipping for the t-shirt, if I'm sending it locally in the UK, the, uh, the shipping's a fiver, five pounds. If it's Europe, seven and a half. If I need to send it globally, it's 10 pounds. Um, uh, and I have them, in, as I say, in navy and grey and in, in men's and women's. So these have been on, uh, on sale. I announced it a week ago to patrons. I gave patrons the first chance to get t-shirts. So they've come in and, and got the things, the, the sizes and the t-shirts that they wanted and they'll be put aside and reserved. Um, and I'm holding on to them and I will ship them the first week in September. The reason for that is every single person that bought uh, an Aquavite t-shirt also bought Aquavite coins. So let's talk about the coins. We, do we know these are these are the Scotch Test Dummies coins? Um, I bought this when I first started to watch the Scotch Test Dummies because I thought it'd be a cool thing to have. And I really have enjoyed it. I think it's just a cool thing. I love the story behind it. I love the fact that it was taken from that kind of military challenge coin thing. And I like the fact that it's been adopted by our community, by our um, specifically, I think, just the whiskey tube community, which is kind of cool. And the fact that you can use it perhaps as a whiskey hat if you, cho if you choose to do that. Just something to fidget with, uh, a conversation piece, something to carry with you for luck, something to settle arguments and decisions with, all of that kind of thing. They're cool things. And I realized that they are quite cool collect to collect as well. And I've got the second, Cask 2. I got Cask 3 as well. And I've also got this, which was a special edition Patreon coin that the dummies uh, sent out to patrons after a certain threshold. And I've just noticed that they've put out Cask 4 as well, which looks super sharp. This one's got their Android design on the back. And on the new one, it's got that kind of Spartan helmet design as well. So that was already quite cool. But then through the, through the mail, I received this, which was super cool. Uh, the Scotch for Dummies have, have done a set of these because there's four of those guys, there's four of them. So they've got a kind of Drew coin, an Andrew coin, a Sean and a Mark coin. And it's got their own kind of um, uh, their own kind of tagline, their own kind of quote along the rolling edge um, and a different design on each one of them to represent each one of those guys. So, I'm all, so these are already very cool as well. So there's an Aquavite coin. I can't show you one. I don't take delivery of them until this weekend. Um, so I, I think, uh, um, well, I, I could actually show you, I can show you if you haven't, only patrons have seen these. They were released a week ago to patrons. I got 250 coins. So it's numbered zero to 250. I reserved zero to 50. So 51 through 250 are available to buy. Most of them, um, most of the popular numbers are already getting snapped up and I've sold 44 just by releasing it to patrons already so they're going quite quick but I will do my best if there's a number a specific number that you're after let me know and I'll do my best to reserve it for you um, and make sure that when I ship the coin to you it's the number that you've asked for um, but try to give me some alternatives as well if the first preference is already gone and I'll, I'll kind of work with you to try and get your ideal number. Let me try and do a screen share. Can I do a screen share just to show you a photo? Here 
there's a photo. Let me see if I can share this with you, just to let you see what they're like. Um, it's the same logo and designs that I've used for the shirt. Okay. No. Why won't it let me share this? Okay, what I'll do is I'll 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 tweet this out, I'll put it on Instagram. Um I'll put a link to this image actually in the description under this video so that you can see it. Um why can't if I can I not just share the whole screen. Let's try that. There we go. Hopefully, that's working. Let me see if, if I watch this over here um, to make sure that that's came up so that you should be able to see uh, side one on the left-hand side with the serial number on it, it's got the, the Water Life barrel and um, uh, uh, just Aquavite Whiskey Evangelism sitting there. On the back, it promotes uh, the virtual pub concept, the idea that we get together every other Thursday and on the live streams, on the B side of the coin. And on the rolling edge, it's got that it's not whiskey until it's shared quote, um, and it's got some Roman numerals. And that's really, that's how I will monitor, if I do other future batches of this, that's how these will be um, uh, measured. So this is uh, Roman numerals for 2018 uh, there. So there we have it. Let's see if I am going to appear back. Has that happened okay? It looks like I'm back. So sorry to talk so long about all of that, but the coins are available just now. The coins are £7.50 each, £2.50 shipping in the UK, £3.50 Europe, and £4.50 uh, international. You're going to be asking me how to pay for this. Um, they will be on, on an online store soon, but that's not done yet. I've just started to kick life back into the Aquavite website. Um, but what you can do is you can PayPal money to my email address, whiskey at aquavite.com. But direct message me first or email me, whiskey at aquavite.com. Tell me what you want, um, and I can tell you exactly what I can give you and what's available. Um, and then you'll know how much to PayPal me after that, after that email exchange. Um, and I'll be shipping everything out first week of September. Maybe I might even be able to get things shipped um, earlier than that. But um, I would expect that most people can expect to receive it first week in, in September. Um, Jason is saying the t-shirt is awesome, right? Thank you very much, Jason. Um, I'm sure it would look a lot better on you than it does on me. Simon Ray, fantastic. Simon, good to see you. He's like saying, I'd like to receive a large grey t-shirt logo, please. Fantastic. Um, as I say, just um, send it through. Jason is after one as well. Um, chat's just jumped away from me there. Um, uh, Greg is saying he's too big for a 2XL. I don't believe that for a second, Greg. Everyone is saying, as a sailor, your logo is Compass Rose that you find on charts. That's absolutely right. There was a kind of not, I ended up with this kind of nautical feel. It wasn't intentional, um, but it does remind me a wee bit of the, com the compass from the old Pulteney uh, marketing and, and branding. You use it to navigate by dead reckoning. It's the way you help your, your way around. Well, I wonder if it'll help me find my way around in my whiskey journey, everyone. Anyway, it's saying coasters to protect tabletops are good and affordable. Yes, Trenny and C, who are also bringing out their own coin. In fact, they've already got it out. I've just bought a Trenny and C coin and it's being shipped to me as we speak. So they've got that, their cool kind of um, as an NBL logo um, send up that they've got on their coin. Um, but they also had coasters as well. And uh, Connor Strang is saying, Aquavite, I want an Aquavite branded Cerbeni. That's a private joke between uh, Connor and I. Um, only Glaswegians get to know what a Cerbeni is. Uh, whiskey Throttle, I better go shopping. Uh, yeah, shopping on, on, at the Aquavite store, hopefully. Um, the Alchemist is saying he'll take a navy t-shirt. Are they slim fit or relaxed whiskey fit? They're not slim fit, but they're not baggy box fit either. They're, they're somewhere in between. They call it retail fit, whatever that may be. Um, so I would say that if you're 
And I know that there's often a difference between um, how the Europeans define sizes and the Americans define sizes. Um, but I'll try and give you some guidance on that when we're when we're discussing, and you can let me know what size you normally are. Um, Whiskey Throttle is saying, where do we get the notice? I must have missed it. Um, well, I'm going to, this was the, the reason tonight to, one of the reasons for tonight was to talk to you about this kind of stuff. It's only been released to patrons uh, uh, so far, Daniel. So you would either have seen it there on the Patreon website or you would have um, just picked it up through me releasing photos and things over the next few days on social media. Um, uh, Greg is saying, fantastic. It's not whiskey until it's shared. Yeah, I mean, that was the whole thing. That's how I, that's, that's how the whole, before I even started on YouTube, um, it was just an outlet I wanted. I knew that I loved talking about whiskey, I loved sharing whiskey, I loved evangelizing, I loved people that were whiskey curious to be in my company so that I could, I could try to kind of get them even more enthused about it and have them understanding it a wee bit more and just how powerful um, and enjoyable a thing it can be. Everyone is saying, I will take one and number does not matter. I had coins, fantastic, everyone. Um, send me through the email and uh, and I'll either try and get a preferred number or I'll just, I'll pick a random number that I think suits you, everyone. Whiskey Throttle is, is off. He's saying work calls. If you get a chance, I set aside 84 and 86 of your coins for me. Uh, I'll do my best, Daniel. I think they might be gone. Uh, 86 is gone, but I'm going to put in I'll put it on hold for uh, 84 for you and you can let me know. It's going to have to be first come, first served, guys. Um, James Hope is saying he's been up since 3.30, so I need to get some sleep. I'll catch the rest on the replay. Good night, everyone. Yeah, I'm going to try not to go on for too long. Um, did anybody catch that thing that happened at McAllen last week? It was quite, a, quite an event, wasn't it? Um, It was uh, £495, non-age statement, McAllen. Um, I'm sure it was wonderful whiskey. I don't really have any intelligence on it. I don't know what was in the bottle. I don't actually know what it was. But they had uh, 2,500 bottles of these. And um, now, admittedly, the press release does say that it was, a, it was released to the global market, 2,500 bottles. But the way it's worded, if somebody was excited and read it real fast, it, it could be read like, available only at the distillery, and then it goes on to say, and uh, McAllen specific travel retail outlets in the Far East. Fantastic. But I think what happened is that loads and loads of people turned up at McAllen, choked the roads, completely blocked the roads, um, only to discover that there were only two or 300, I'm not very sure how many, I think it was 300 and odds that was available for sale at the distillery. So they only permitted 80 cars to get in enough cars to fill the car park, I guess. And then um, lots and lots of people were disappointed. <sighs> but at the end of the day, I mean, if you think about this, if you think about, I don't know, 2,500 bottles at 500 pounds, so that's two and a half million. So it's one point, one and a quarter million pounds revenue. And the profit that McAllen would make out of that, I don't know, I would guess 150 grand, 200 grand. It's a lot of money, but it's not, for McAllen's scale, I mean, it's not. What McAllen actually got out of that was literally a story on virtually every single news outlet and then across the globe. Just the craziness of that event. Quite an amazing thing to have happened. The police had to come out and unblock the road. I mean, the local constabulary is out to just try and manage the situation. And um, I don't think it was nasty. I don't think there was any... I've not heard any details about it. I don't think there was any kind of necessarily people fighting each other or anything like that. But it's just, it's an incredible metric of where I, I, that type of whiskey, and, and I'm not, I don't mean McAllen, I'm talking about collectible whiskey. Um, and I mean collectible with a small C as well. It's, it's just where that's going now. And I can guarantee we can all imagine that that whiskey, that £495 bottle, would have arrived very fast on all sorts of um, forums and sales outlets for considerably 
more than the 495 retail almost immediately. It's just crazy times, and I'm and I'm at a loss as as a solution for it. But McAllen did very very well out of that, didn't he? Uh, malt reviews in Jason, fantastic. Saying bottles already over 2k. That's that's the McC so that Genesis, that McAllen Genesis, it's already over two grand. It's just crazy. For an, we don't, do we even know what's in it? I know what's in this glass. This Deanston is delicious. Thank you again, Bart. Absolutely delicious. Very, very rich. Yeah, it is, it is very sweet. There's a, it's almost like a golden syrup sweetness on the on the finish, but it's delicious. Um, McAllen's traffic jam, absolutely. Uh, Malt Chronicles back to saying, I heard the police closed the road because of the lines. Yeah, just because of how many cars were parked on the verge and uh, people were out just, just, yeah, crazy. McAllen Fine and Rare saying that the hype is overheating. Yeah, but this, the money seems to be out there. The desire and the, the want seems to be out there. It's not where we are in whiskey. That's kind of why, you know, I'm not really, a, I'm a, I don't buy McAllen. I mean, there are some McAllens out there that I think do hold some interest for us. The edition series could be interesting. They're not so expensive. They're readily available usually. Um, you can buy them and, and try them and share them. They're a decent ABV. No age statement, but they're a, a decent makeup. And I don't like people having a a go at McAllen's quality of product. That their their spirit is fantastic. It, maybe we don't like the way it's presented. If it's presented at forty or forty three percent or whatever, but the quality of the spirit is fantastic. It cannot live up to its prices, though. There's far too many other alternatives out there for you to enjoy whiskey that's that's not nearly as expensive as McAllen. And uh, Blind Whiskey Reviews, John. Hey, John, how are you? Good to welcome you in. He's asking how many of those bottles went straight online to be sold. I really don't know, but I can imagine a considerable amount. I would be shocked if many of them were being open and shared. And like I've said, like we've talked about, for me, and it's just me, I know that, and I don't represent all of the whiskey landscape. For Just for me, it isn't whiskey until it's open and shared. Uh, Malt Chronicles is saying it takes water really well. Did you spot? I've just put a wee splash of water in this. Mm. So yeah, there we have it. There is Aquavitae merch now. I'm not going to push it. It's not going to be all kind of merch and the brand and everything. This channel is always just going to be about whiskey and about sharing whiskey. It's going to be all about whiskey. And I'm going to try my very, very hardest to keep that focus and not get carried away in any directions. Um, but... I have to be honest with you that that yes, it, it gets to the point with whiskey and especially with with making this setup. If you if you saw what I'm sitting in here tonight with with the machine and the lights and the camera and everything, um, and the time and the amount of money I'm spending on whiskey right now, if I can find ways to offset that, I'm going to take it, and I'm not going to force it on anyone. It's always going to be an option. And if you find I'm talking too much about merch or I'm selling too much, by all means mention it, draw my attention to it, don't let me get carried away, but let me have the ability to at least offer it as an option for the people that genuinely do want to have merchandise. Um, and it'll always be optional. You don't need to take it up. It's like anything else. The content will still go out on YouTube and it'll still be free um, regardless of whether you, you, you buy the merchandise or not. Uh, Mosey Chun is saying to drink. I think it's the first time I've seen you in. Uh, fantastic to welcome you. Um, I think it's Mosey or Mose. Apologies. Um, he's saying to drink or sell. That is a question. For me, it's always to drink. I've never, ever bought anything to sell. And even the ones that I know that are going to appreciate in price or or um, the special ones, that they're, in the, they're in there with a view to it being opened at some appropriate moment in the future. Um, Really, and and when people bring whiskies to me, when people say, "Oh, my granny gave me this whiskey," or "My uncle gave me this," or "I've got this in my cupboard," and they show me these whiskies, and and I can see that sometimes they're quite nice whiskies. Immediately, I want the whiskey, but I don't want it because I know it's a valuable whiskey. I want it because I know it's probably a good whiskey, and I haven't tasted it yet. <laughs> and I would, even though I know that some of them would appreciate quite fast, I would be buying that whiskey fully 
aware that it's probably going to get popped and opened. McAllen Fine Rare is saying even a Rolls Royce is only a car, and that's right, McAllen is only ever a whiskey, and that's where I think McAllen and a lot of the additions now are beyond the point of the whiskey being able to live up to its value, unless it's people that don't really care so much, or they don't, um, you know, perhaps they have more money that they, they just don't need to care, I think. It's difficult to find a polite way to put that. The mash and drum is in fantastic, I think. Mash and drum, are you Jason? Are you another Jason? I, I'm not sure if you're a Jason, but it's fantastic to welcome you in. Uh, Mash and drum has just uh, started doing. Uh, re I like I like his candor. I like his um, presentation to the camera. It's a new YouTube channel. By all means, wander over to the Mash and drum and, and check him out. Um, but it's fantastic to welcome you in, my friend. He's saying sharing samples of whiskey and enjoying together is the best part of whiskey. Absolutely. Literally, if there, if that wasn't in whiskey for me, I probably wouldn't be drinking whiskey. It's delicious. It's nice to have whiskey on your own in a quiet environment, just sitting by yourself. But it's all about the connection with me. It's all about the discussion. Um, as Paul McDonough, the manager of the Bon Accord in Glasgow, would say, it's a, it's a conversation in a glass. It's just one of the things um, that I love about it, the language. But it's that is how if you do have that kind of little mini epiphany moment where you have a wonderful whiskey that really connects with you that you're really enjoying i think it's it's um the experience is multiplied significantly when you can have that as a shared moment and you agree and you both of you are staring at the glass or a group of you are staring at the glass just going this is wonderful and when that happens it is fantastic jason is asking me when i get back from texas i get back i go out there jason on thursday and i get back here I leave on Sunday and I get back here on Monday, round about Monday afternoon at some point. Fortunately, fortunately, it's a bank holiday here. This Dean does take water really, really well, but it's fantastic. I've missed what everybody else has been drinking out there tonight. We're coming up on the hour mark. Um, what time are we at now? 22. I haven't even been... How have we been doing? Um, just been doing a lot of chatting, I think. I know I've probably been missing a lot of your comments and things. But uh, that's kind of where we're at, what I've been doing over the summer. And what I've been spending my time on up to now, I'm focused on this uh, this trip to the States, but I'm also wondering about, I was really quite proud of the live streams last year, not because of the content or anything, but just by the fact that I stayed committed to it and I managed to do two a month and, uh, and not miss any. And that kind of meant that instead of just me talking about a live stream, doing the live stream or a live stream, that's what kind of made me want to call it something, to refer to it as something. Um, and I was really inspired and I always got really excited about this idea that people get together from all over the place. Um, and uh, and it did always feel to me a little bit like a virtual pub, albeit a virtual pub where there's a much louder voice coming from me than you guys. Um, but I know that you guys feel the same way because I get the direct messages, I get the comments that saying the same thing and you have your conversations amongst yourselves. I've just spotted that f that um, that Phil is in. Uh, I've just the conversations moved on. I hope I didn't miss your comment, Phil. Yeah, Phil Dwyer is in. Phil from Whiskey Wednesday, fantastic to have you. And he's just mentioned Kleinleash fourteen missed this bottle. I actually don't have any Kleinleash fourteen in the house, and that hasn't happened for a number of years. I recently just finished it. I shared it with a friend, and we we killed the bottle off. And it, it's still, you know, people like to knock Diageo, they're the big boys, but there's a lot of things that Diageo do very, very well, and that Klein Leash 14 is one of them, especially when it's presented at 46%. It's always available, it's always at a decent price. I was out for a dinner on Friday night as well with one of the the whiskey fabric, as you, as you like, Mario C, he's from Scotch Addicts. I'm not a member of Scotch Addicts, um, but the two of us met on Isla, and we've been in touch since. We, we, we managed to share some dinner together on Friday night, and the the drama I ordered for the table for everyone was a uh, Klein Leash 14. Um, and that was in a, a whiskey restaurant in uh, Artisan in Wishaw. Um, it's got 3,000 whiskies. And that's kind of what I reached for because it's it's just a solid, solid whiskey. 
Uh, Scott is saying, got to go, everyone. Have a great time in Texas and say hello to Barton Scott from me. I will, Scott, that's fantastic. And I look forward to you and I hooking up um, at some point when you're back and we're in Glasgow again. Uh, Connor is saying, I need to do a Klein Leash and a Taninic stock up. Uh, so that's, uh, are you worried about Taninic disappearing? Are you worried about the flora and fauna disappearing? Um, and uh, Phil is saying, stunning bottle, Aquavite, fully agreed. Absolutely. Paul Gibbs is in, fantastic. I was looking for your name and that's the first time I've spotted it. Um, before I finish tonight, um, I, I won't get to finish the dram, but I will pour one of these fantastic drams that I got from Paul. Uh, Paul, we managed to hook up um, a few months back now. Uh, we managed to hook up when you were visiting Scotland and we managed to shake hands and share a dram. Uh, but Paul has since sent me up, um, he since sent me a very nice bottle of Kilcarran. Um Thank you very much for that. You're a superstar. But he also sent me this these uh, half a dozen samples, two of each, so that I could share them with uh, the Whiskey Rev or, or somebody, which was really thoughtful. A Glen Elgin 1995, a 21-year-old Glen Elgin. Um, uh, now, this Glen Elgin, I can't... Is that Cadenheads or something? Um, it doesn't say on it, but it's at 46%. A Deanston, an independent bottling of a Deanston, 2006, 11-year-old, um, from a Sherry Butt. Fantastic. And also a Mortlac, a 2002 Mortlac, a 15-year-old uh, Mortlac. I think this is, this is, I'm sure, a Cadenheads. Or maybe it's a Signatory. Could it be a Signatory? Um, as well. And the, he sent these up for me. So I think I'm going to go for the Mortlac once I finish this this little Deanston. So Phil, Phil's having a clean leash. That's fantastic. That's just fantastic. Phil's having a clean leash. What else has been drunk tonight? Uh, Paul is saying, I only tried the Scallywag, really enjoyed it. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, special edition Scallywags out as well that are really quite decent as well. Still reasonable money too. Brandon Lee, fantastic to see you in Brandon. He's going to grab a dram of Timorous Beastie after work. He's still at work. I guess so much of you still are at work. So even though I'm doing it on a Monday, a different night, it's still a school night, I guess, for for most and a work day for the guys out that, um, in the States and the like. Um, che Francis, that's a new name as well. Welcome in, Che. Pretty new to whiskey, but been really enjoying these videos, drinking Red Breast 12 tonight. Thank you, Che. They're not always cohesive. They're often monologues from me, but I really appreciate everyone joining in, and it's fantastic. And, and Paul is saying Aquavitia is a signatory bottling. You're welcome, chap. Thank you very, very much. Um, I Over the course of the summer as well, I've picked up quite a few more patrons, um, but I lost a patron. Uh, and uh, he sent me a message, and uh, one of the reasons that I lost a patron is... Um, one of the things that I do is I credit people at the end of the videos, I credit the people that are supporting me through Patreon. Um, and uh, I thought I'd sent out a message, it's my mistake, I thought I'd sent out a message to everyone to say, um, you know, I'm going to include credits and thank yous at the end of the videos. Um, but he didn't want his name shared at the end of a video, um, which is absolutely understandable. I get that completely, some people. Uh, would prefer to have their anonymity. Um, so what I would say is that if there's anyone out there that does not want their name at the end of the video, and I'm going to send out messages on Patreon to this effect as well, um, to say that you know I intend to include this as standard um, for the people who have chosen to support me. Um, but that's what's that's what's kind of stopping me giving shout outs to the new patrons that have joined me. I've kind of had my fingers burnt a wee bit. Um, and I wanted to kind of just welcome in the new patrons that have joined me over the summer and kind of get, there's there's been a bunch of you and I know that I'm probably delinquent and not giving a, a, quite a few of you a shout out. And I know that we communicate and I know that we message and we talk to each other on the Patreon platform and direct messages and things, but it's nice to just say thanks when I'm, when I'm on air. Um, it seems an appropriate place to do it, just to say thank you for your support. Um, so yes, if anybody's uncomfortable about having their name or having dedicated videos or anything like that, please let me know and it'll never happen. Okay, Mortlac 2002 signatory from a hogshead. Whiskey Jason has just dropped in and he said, hi Roy, hello Jason, 
fantastic to have you in. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to setting up the live streams for real from the 13th of September onwards. But let me let you into a little kind of semi-secret. When I arrive in Texas on Thursday, um, I have uh, the, the fortune of being collected at the airport by Scott and Bart of the Scotch Test Tummies, which is fantastic. They're going to swing by the airport on their way. They're going to pick me up. Um, hopefully, we're in the same hotel together. I'm fairly sure that we are. And if that is the case, and if the Wi-Fi is strong enough, I will try to go out, and I just don't know what time it's going to be. I'm going to be in Texas, so it's going to be quite late for European and UK time. But I will try my hardest to put a live stream together from the hotel over there and hopefully have Scott and Bart uh, join me for a quick impromptu live stream from Texas. That would be fantastic. I can sleep on the plane, so I hope that... Uh, I should arrive reasonably well rested and excited to do that. Um, so there will be a, hopefully a kind of drop in live just to share um, a dram with you quickly. It won't be very long. It certainly won't be as long as this one tonight. We're, we've just cracked an hour now. Um, and then what we'll do is is maybe through Patreon, I'll, I'll try and use the les, lens function if it, if it works at all. Um, to try and share what I'm doing during the day. I will be filming. I'll take the camera with me and I will film. I've got an, a concept. I've got an idea in my mind about what the type of video that I want to make when I'm out there. Um, and But you can keep in touch with what's happening over the course of that weekend on the Whiskey Tribe channel. So if you just... If you're, you're probably subscribers already, but they're, they're live streaming throughout the day um, and you'll get to see the kind of activity that's happening there. But regardless, before that all kicks off on Thursday night, you'll be able to hang out with us for a quick dram. Hopefully, it probably will be quite late in the day. Um, so I guess most of the UK European people will be picking that up on the replay. And then from the 13th of September, which is roughly about three weeks from now, I think, I'll be back and the regular live streams will be there. I've already got a couple of guests lined up. They're not scheduled, they're not slotted in for uh, specific shows yet, but it's kind of quite, uh, I think, kind of cool guests. Guests with a story, guests with, um, you know, something interesting to say and their take on whiskey. Um, and uh, who knows, I'll be doing some collaborations and things with other channels and things, I hope, as well in the future. Um, but the regular live streams will kick off from 13th of September. And I'm super excited about that. Let's see if there's any comments before we wind this up. Uh, London Whiskey Club, Jez is saying, good night, all good night. Well done on 3K subs. Thank you very much, Jez. Thank you so much. So we should use the email from your website to contact you, Aquavita. Yes, whiskey without the E, just whiskey at aquavita.com. And Aquavita is frustratingly spelt with that V in the aqua. It's not a U, it's like the Latin V, Aquavita. And uh, Scott has just dropped in. Uh, he's saying, hi, everyone. Hi, Roy Aquavite. Coming in late. I know. Don't worry about it, Scott. It's fantastic to see you in. I've just been talking about how um, we have the chance to actually meet each other on Thursday, which is which is just really, really super cool. Jason is saying he's got to head off as well, but have a great time in Texas. Look forward to seeing your video from the trip. I need to get one of those coins of yours and shut. Fantastic, Jason. We'll have a wee chat after the show and uh, you can let me know what you're after. Superb. Um, what are you up to, Scott? Are you already finished for the day? I guess you were filming today. Uh, I dropped in on your live stream earlier. So you've uh, you've probably had a day off today, I hope. And Gregor is in. Fantastic, Gregor. Good to see you. He's saying, I'm curious on the relationship between Whiskey Vault and the Whiskey Tube community. Well, that's, that's a curious thing. And um, I mean, there was a kind of relationship there, but it wasn't it was a slightly different dynamic because the vault itself, I I don't really fully understand this, and I guess I'll know more once I go out there. I think it was a non-profit. Um, so that meant that they couldn't really collaborate or, or work with channels, monetized channels, uh, channels selling merchandise, and maybe uh, channels that were involved in brand deals or, or I don't know, sponsorship. or I'd, I'm not really sure. I don't know. That's just me kind of guessing and speaking out loud, Gregor. Um, but it meant that they were restricted. However, once they kind of, once they started the whiskey biscuits thing, I think that's a completely different entity uh, with a completely different uh, mission and goal. And it means that they've uh, been able to kind of collaborate a wee bit more. But if you follow those guys and watch what they're doing, 
I don't think they've got any capacity to collaborate with other channels and things like that. They're they're running multiple businesses, the Whiskey Marketing School, uh, the kind of Wizard Academy side of things. They're doing the Whiskey Vault channel. They're doing Whiskey Biscuits channel. They're building a distillery. They're managing a massive... Um, the Whiskey Tribe is massive. I mean, it's it's thousands of people. That channel started in October. The Whiskey Tribe channel started in October last year, and it's at close to 40,000 subscribers already. It's quite amazing. So that how they have time to do anything um, is quite amazing to me. And Gregor Sienakro, you did David and Goliath contrasts on subscriptions. Absolutely. that's And it, and it is. It's... it's Everybody finds their audience. Everybody finds their 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 subscriber pool. If if I was putting out much more content, it would be reasonable to expect more subscribers. But my subscribers match the content, the quality of content, the actual content, and the amount of content that I'm putting out right now. Those guys are putting out a bunch more content. They're working a lot harder, um, and they they are also putting out fun, entertaining, educational content as well. I think it's very, very good. Um, Daniel knows his stuff. Daniel knows whiskey very, very well. So let's have a wee try of this. Just put water in this, actually. I should have tried some first. Oh! It's actually, it actually tastes like a wee puff of smoke on that. I didn't expect that at all. Maybe it's because of the sweetness, all this really super sweet whiskies I've, I've had tonight. Um, you know, the Ice Wine Glen Breton and then the, the PX, that Mortlach tastes, tastes quite smoky almost. Um, Gregor saying, absolutely no judgment. An interesting debate though. Yeah, absolutely. And Gregor is saying, sorry, got to go. No problem, Gregor. Thanks to everybody for joining in tonight. It's really, really cool. Um, it was short notice. I appreciate that that it, it's not the usual um, slot. I did promise you an ad hoc kind of midsummer thing, and this was it. This is the night I could fit it in. I'm really glad that, that you, so many of you, turned up and joined me tonight. Uh, Error has joined in as well. Fantastic, Error, to see you. We had the uh, fantastic opportunity to meet up earlier in the year as well at Deanston. He's saying um, he's talking to McAllen Fine and Rare, uh, and you'll be on Island September. Superb, Error. Fantastic. Um, yeah, but we got to hook up at Deanston. Um, that was a great opportunity. I've actually managed to meet up with quite a lot of folk this year, which is brilliant. Um, and there's Amy drumming up the, the thumbs up like she always does. She's pretty good at that. Amy, you are the thumbs bully. Thank you so much for looking out for me. Um, Graham Young as well. Superb to see you, Graham. Uh, nice to welcome you in again. It's been great to have all of you dropping in. I think I've covered most of the things that I wanted to talk about. Um, so the coins at Training see I've got coins out there. Scotch for Dummies have got the coins out there. Scotch Test Dummies have just released Cask 4. Um, and the Aquavite, uh, I just can't show you one yet, um, but the Aquavite coins are now available as well for pre-order, and they'll ship as soon as I get back from Texas. I take delivery of them this weekend. Um, fantastic. I'm looking forward to kicking things off again from the 13th of September, and I hope that some of you are available to look out for when we're going to be able to just do some kind of ad hoc spur of the moment live stream uh, when we arrive in Texas on Thursday, I hope. It's been fantastic that you've all joined in. It's been fantastic to get all your messages, um, emails, uh, uh, all the contact that I've had with you throughout the, the summer break has been wonderful. It's been able to keep me in touch with you all and keep things moving along. But I'm looking forward to getting back in the swing of things come September. And thanks for indulging me on this little kind of ad hoc Monday evening. So until next time, everybody, slant you.